thanks for joining me. In this video today, we're going to talk about how to organize your inbox in Gmail. Now, that may sound like a very basic concept, but there's actually some really cool tools inside Gmail that you can use to simplify your workflow as you receive emails. I know a lot of people subscribe to different newsletters or forums or social media, and then they end up regretting it later because it just floods their inbox. So using some of the organizational tips that we're going to provide today will help make your life a little bit easier. Now the first thing that you'll want to do is obviously go to mail.google.com and log into your Gmail account. And once you're there, at the top right, go to the settings menu and click on configure inbox. Now what this does is it allows you, if you choose to do so, it allows you to sort your inbox into your primary inbox, a social inbox, which will be for social media, anything that you might get from Google+, Twitter, or Facebook, promotions, which would be for any offers that you get from stores that you sign up for, say for instance Staples or Best Buy, and then you can also do updates and forums. Um, now forums specifically would be related to discussion boards and Google groups that you subscribe to. So if you choose to do any one of these, just make sure you check the ones that you want to use. And then also at the bottom, you have the option of putting starred messages in your primary inbox, making sure that they go into that primary sorting of your inbox. Once you have your settings the way you want them, click Save. And then you'll notice that the top of your box in Gmail has changed from one inbox to however many tabs you've chosen. In my case, I have a primary and then I have a social, which has nothing in it right now because I have not used this address to subscribe to any social media. And then promotions for any stores that I subscribe to that send out promotional emails. Now, this does create a more simplified inbox. However, some people don't like that. So if you choose to change back, all you have to do is go back to your settings menu, click on configure inbox, and then uncheck these boxes and save it back to the original settings that you had with one inbox for everything. Now, that's one option. The other option to help organize your life is by the use of labels. Now you may notice that there are no specific folders necessarily in Gmail. That's because Gmail does not operate on folders. What they do is they allow you to sort by labels. The difference is, is that with folders, in an email client that uses folders, when you assign an email that has come into you, say for instance from your principal, and you have a folder called principal, once you move that email to that folder, that's where it resides. And it's no longer in your inbox. With labels, labels give you the benefit of applying multiple labels to an email. Let me give you an example. Let's say for instance, with this email here, this is from one of our librarians. So if I go to the top of my screen and click on the labels icon, I can add any one of my inbox labels to it or I can create a new label and let's say I create one called library and it has automatically been assigned to this email so now it's in my inbox but it's also categorized as library and I might want to label it let's say I want to add Google as a label as well now what you're going to notice is that as I've done this, it's added the labels to this email and the labels are also listed over here in my menu at the left. I have a library label and a Google label. So if I look in my inbox, here is that email, but if I look in the Google label, it shows up there as well and in the library section. So what this means is that you can apply multiple labels to an email meaning that it can reside in multiple places. In actuality, Gmail has made it so that you can apply up to 5,000 labels to any one message in your inbox. And that's a little outlandish, I'm sure, to you, but it's possible. So you never know, you might get to that point where you have to have 5,000 labels. Now, 
if I'm in my inbox, for instance, and I want to search for any items with the label library, then I can type label colon and then library and hit enter and it pulls up all of them. So this makes searching your inbox a lot easier as well. So that's just a quick rundown on labels. You can actually organize your labels a little bit further if you go up to your settings icon and choose settings. And in this section, we will address some of these items later on in future videos, but you'll notice across the top, you have a setting for labels. From this section, you can actually choose to show or hide any of the items over here in your left-hand menu just by simply clicking on them. If you look at the labels that I've created recently, Google and Library, I can choose to show, which they're currently showing in my menu at the left. I can hide them if I no longer want them, but I would like to use them later. Or if I click show if unread, that means that that label will only show up if I have unread items in that labeled category, which is very handy because if you always have them up, it can go easily unnoticed, but if they only pop up when you have unread items, such as the inbox here has one unread item, then it will possibly grab your attention. You can also go out to the far right and you can remove any labels. That does not actually remove the email from your inbox. It just removes the labeling of Google, for instance, or a library that I've created. It removes those labels from the email and it takes them out of my menu at the left. And if I decide later that Google was not a good descriptor for that label, I can also click edit and I can rename that label and it will automatically apply to any emails that I've previously used that label on. Okay, so that's a quick rundown on labels. Let's go back to our inbox and let's talk about starring items. Now let's say for instance I have this message about a Google meeting and I want to make this an item that is starred or it's a favorite item so I can refer to it later. This is similar to a label but it's a little bit different. Um, if you'll notice next to the reply button we have a small star now it's it's washed out it's actually not been activated but if I click on it this email has now been starred as a favorite email that I want to refer to later and if I look over in my inbox here I can see that it now has a yellow star applied to it if I click on my starred menu I can see that it has been added to the starred menu as well so this is similar to a label, but it's without actually applying it to a specific category. You can actually set up stars or symbols for your starred menu that may mean multiple things to you. For instance, if I go over to my settings menu and click on settings, I'm gonna stay in this general settings menu, but I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and you'll notice that there is a section here on stars. Now with the stars you can have any of these stars or symbols that you use currently none of these are in use so let's say for instance I want to use this exclamation mark to signify important emails that I want to view later if I want to use that I just drag it from the not in use to the in use line and now it becomes one of my options for a starred email and if I wanted to use one of these colored stars I can do that as well and if you'll notice, the yellow star is first, the exclamation mark is second, and the blue star is third. That order means that each time I click on a star in my email inbox, it will cycle through those stars until I reach the one that I want to apply to that email. Now, all I have to do at this point is go back to my inbox. It says my changes have not been saved, so I'm gonna click cancel, and this is a good point. Many of the settings that you apply to your email inbox, you must save. So make sure that you scroll to the bottom of the page and click Save Changes so that they apply to your inbox. Now, if I go back to one of my emails, and let's say, for instance, I want to reapply a star to this one, each time I click the star, it cycles through those options. And let's say I don't want this to be a yellow star, 
I want it to be an exclamation mark, which to me would mean important. Now it's been applied. If I go back to my inbox, I can see that it's got an exclamation mark. And if I look in my starred menu, it, it shows up that way as well. So one of the differences between labels like library and Google that I have right here is that with starred, you can have multiple symbols in that one category applied to emails. So I could be in the starred menu, but I have several emails. Let's look at this one, for instance. I'll apply a yellow star to that one. Or you can do it from your inbox. And I'll apply a blue star to these. And a yellow to that one. So now if I look in my starred menu, they all show up there. So keep in mind with this, you could have items that are starred, but that also have labels for each of your categories. And that allows you to search them in several different ways. The last thing I want to cover in this section is about conversation view. You can actually set up your emails so that when you reply or forward or respond to emails, they show up as a conversation thread as opposed to separate emails. Some people like this, some people do not. So let me show you what I mean. Currently, I have this message in my inbox that says, did you get this? I was testing out my email and sharing it with another email address that I have. And you'll notice that in the recipients box, it shows that there are two people in this email conversation. That's because I have my email set up as conversation view. So if I open this email, I can see the original post. It says checking. The response to this is yes, I received it. And if I click reply down here, I can say glad to know that and hit send. And so that will be sent back to the other email address that I have. And if I go back to my inbox, you can see that it shows up that there are three items in this conversation between these addresses. So that's what conversation view is about. Rather than have these be separate disjointed emails that I have to search my inbox for, it becomes one conversation. And each time somebody responds and I have an unread message in that thread, it promotes it to the top of my email inbox. Now, if you don't like this, you can actually go to the settings menu, click on settings, and in the general section, there is a section called conversation view. And you can choose to turn conversation view off. If I do that at this time and scroll to the bottom and click save changes, then you'll notice that the whole thing about the conversation and how many messages were in that conversation is now missing. And the response from that other email address, the other person in this case, is also missing. So if I click on this, it just shows up as one email. Okay, so if you would like to see the conversation and be able to view it all at once each time you use it, I suggest you turn on conversation view. It does make things a little bit easier in my book. I'm going to turn that back on for myself and click Save Changes. Okay, well, um, that is a quick rundown. Um, later on in another video, we're going to talk about how to search your inbox. And stay tuned for that one. Thanks for joining me.